comes Darren Ballsy. So we, we showed you the run expectancy with first and third nobody out and it goes down for the Cubs hitters with the bases loaded still pretty good though almost eight out of ten chances. Feels like you're at a disadvantage on the road in these extra inning games. The one advantage though is the Cubs still have their closer left in the bullpen. That's Kevin Gregg and he would pitch the bottom of the inning if they can at least get one here. Sherholtz takes ball one. Mm -hmm. and Boxberger sooner or later is going to have to come in. Sherholtz very good at keeping his hands inside hitting the ball up the middle or the other way. This is a great approach against a guy with a change up like Boxberger. So a good approach if you're trying to get the ball in the air. Ground ball to first. To the plate. Oh, oh it hits Sherholtz. And McDonald will score. I hope Nate's all right. Was the, you know that, that was a little confusing looking as Sherholtz was trying to get out of the box. I hope he's all right. As it is. The Cubs have the lead still nobody out. This is unbelievable painful way to take yeah. the lead. He stumbled coming out of the box could very easily have been a 3 2 3 double play. Watch a little rollover something gives on him he falls in the batter's box as he gets up to start his trot down the first baseline he's hit by the throw. Just an unbelievable turn of events. That's just incredible. He crumples in the box after rolling over on a ground ball, takes the throw off the shoulder. And I guess when it's nothing, nothing in the 13th inning, you would expect that run to come home in a rather bizarre fashion. So fielder's choice E3. Wow, you think about the way this last inning or so has transpired. Amarista trying to steal third and then having to scramble back on that deep fly to center so he could not advance. And then what looked like the perfect scenario for the Padres there with that ground ball to first, they get nothing. 